It's my profound pleasure to welcome you to the Bank of Namibia's 24th Annual Symposium. I wish to express my gratitude and appreciation to all our invited guests and discussants for accepting our invitation and availing time to be with us on this occasion to share views and knowledge on this important topic, the transformation of the rural economy in Namibia. The annual symposium of the Bank of Namibia aims to contribute to Namibia's development and economic policy discourse. Annually, the bank identifies a vital development and economic issue facing Namibia to which this dialogue can contribute evidence-based solutions. The annual symposium is therefore a forum designed to bring together policy experts, academics, lawmakers, and economic development stakeholders to discuss the economic policy issues on the identified topic. The rural economy is not a monolithic entity. It is made up of diverse range of sectors and industries, each with its own unique challenges and opportunities. Rural economic transformation is about finding ways to support growth and development of these sectors and industries while also addressing the challenges they face. Therefore, my remarks this morning are intended to set the scene and background for the ensuing discussions and interventions by especially highlighting three key factors that are paramount for rural transformation. These key aspects, I am convinced, will enable the country to reimagine rural economic transformation. These are the promotion of sustainable agriculture, rural infrastructure development, and supporting the informal sector. But before I delve into these issues, allow me to reflect briefly on rural Namibia. Director of Ceremonies, ladies and gentlemen, honorable ministers, leaders of parties, invited guests, for inclusive development, Namibia must revive its rural areas. Namibia's rural areas seem to have been forgotten and have become zones of economic misery. High levels of poverty, unemployment, and limited access to basic services characterize them. This is also coupled with the phenomenon of essential service providers, including financial institutions, shying away from these areas, which exacerbates inequality and financial exclusion, amongst others. The disparity between the rural and urban areas are not only undermining overall economic development, but also aggravates social inequality and hinders the country's progress towards achieving Vision 2030 goals. Namibia is witnessing a steady increase in urbanization. The pull factors are better economic opportunities, education, healthcare, and infrastructure in urban areas. Some of the key factors of rural urban migration are the huge disparities in living conditions, as well as the lack of employment opportunities in rural areas. The Labour Force Survey of 2018, and that, that's the latest available one, shows that unemployment in rural Namibia remains higher than in urban areas, particularly among the youth. Youth unemployment in rural areas was estimated 49.1% in 2018, compared to 44% in urban areas. This has led to an accelerated rate of urbanization in the country. According to a World Bank report, by 2015, 72% of Namibians are expected to live in urban areas, putting pressure on existing space 
and infrastructure, increasing land prices and reducing land access, especially for the poor. This calls for careful planning and devising of appropriate policies and strategies to mitigate the situation and reduce the pace at which rural urban migration is happening. Director of Ceremonies, ladies and gentlemen, realizing the rural economic transformation is critical for Namibia's inclusive growth and development. Given the complex nature of rural development, a focused approach is required. We must identify a few key developmental and impactful initiatives that will help us to intervene and make progress on rural economic transformation. I now wish to reflect on the three key aspects that I spoke of earlier. If we prioritize as a country, this would lead us to economic transformation and rural Namibia. That's the promotion of sustainable agriculture, the development of rural infrastructure, and supporting the informal sector. Let's talk about sustainable agriculture. Agriculture holds the key to rural economic transformation. It is already playing a vital role in the rural economy, providing employment opportunities and providing food security. To revive and transform the rural economy, we must make agriculture a business where entrepreneurs are grown and nurtured. Indeed, a wealth-creating sector. To be clear, agriculture is not a developmental sector. Agriculture is business. Agriculture should shift from subsistence farming to increase productivity and diversification. Diversification involves developments in technology, the provision of better infrastructure and well-functioning agricultural markets to support more diversified production. It's about how do we increase the income of the agricultural sector, of people in rural Namibia. How do we get the income increase? Agricultural diversification has been a policy objective of most developing countries during the structural ch change process. Asian nations such as Japan, Thailand and South Korea have been successful in diversifying the agricultural sector. Rainfall patterns in Namibia have become more unpredictable and inconsistent with the traditional farming seasons as exacerbated by climate change. The country has been experiencing persistent drought conditions for over seven years. The Namibian government declared national emergencies in 1992, 1993, 1995, 1996, 2012, 2013, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2018, and 2019, due to extreme drought events. And by the end of 2019, which was the worst drought recorded in 90, 90 years, agriculture production was at its lowest. Increased livestock deaths were reported and many families had the essential livelihood affected. The rural population is the most affected by droughts as they highly depend on crops and livestock production on communal land. The Namibia Drought Assessment Report of 2022 estimated that about 750,000 Namibians are food insecure. In fact, studies highlight that the SADC region is highly vulnerable to climate change due to its geographical location, social and economic characteristics, and dependence on natural resources. This is extremely worrisome, and if we do not put measures in place to remedy the situation, we might have a national crisis on our hands. For this reason, climate resilient practices in the agricultural sector should be prioritized 
now more than ever. Other challenges facing rural farmers are access to markets, inadequate infrastructure, and availability in inadequate use of technology and financial resources. There is thus a need to focus and invest in rural infrastructure, including irrigation systems, storage facilities, and transportation networks. Equally, it is important to ensure access to finance and technical support to enable the adoption of modern and sustainable farming techniques. We must leverage innovation and technologies. It should not be a far-fetched dream for agriculture to use sophisticated technologies. It should definitely be possible to use robots, temperature and moisture sensors, aerial images, and GPS technology to enable more profitable, efficient, safer, and more environmentally friendly practices and methods. Such actions will go a long way in enhancing and improving rural agricultural productivity and transforming the rural economy. Therefore, the importance of irrigation schemes, such as green schemes, in the transformation of the agricultural sector and its contribution to food security cannot be overemphasized. Additionally, we must ensure the support and extension services provided to our farmers in rural areas while simultaneously preventing corruption and inefficiencies that must allocate resources from this vital sector. The area of food security in particular offers immense opportunities and is suitable for the unskilled profile of our unemployed population. Equally, it offers an opportunity and ideal structure to kickstart our rural and regional economies, as alluded to. We need to invest in agri-technology skills continually and business know-how development, as well as designing productive programs such as equipment schemes that can raise productivity in the agricultural sector. Let's consider the infrastructure side. Infrastructure, including organizational structures, is a key factor for rural economic transformation. Access to infrastructure network, such as roads, electricity, mobile communications, and decent housing are critical enablers of rural economic transformation. Firstly, roads are the arteries through which the economy pulses and connects rural areas with urban centers and with urban markets. By linking producers to markets, workers to jobs, students to schools, and the sick to hospitals, roads are vital to any development agenda. Therefore, improved rural road infrastructure enables connectivity and safe mobility. Namibia is consistently ranked top in Africa in the quality of roads. However, the overall quality of rural roads is far below the target value. This is because a large part of the rural road network remains unpaved, mostly gravel, unsealed, and poorly maintained. Such circumstances make it challenging and difficult for meaningful rural productivity improvements and rural production to take off. Rail transportation must also be in the mix to decongest the roads and create viable logistics sector that takes the produce of farmers to the market in an efficient manner. Similarly, reliable and affordable energy and access to water are essential for rural economic activity. Limited access to electricity and inadequate water supply hinders rural economic growth and discourages investment. We must prioritize the construction and maintenance of rural infrastructure, build and upgrade roads, and expand rural electrification, especially when considering the opportunities available for renewable energy. 
Bless the 300 days of sunshine the year, and offering a climate well suited for solar generation, Namibia represents a viable solar energy market. However, according to the Namibia Household National Data of 2016, there are about 235,000 rural households, of which only 35,000 are connected to the grid, while 18,000 rural households have access to solar energy. This gives a rural electrification rate estimation of 21%. There are various government options available for renewable energy, such as a solar revolving fund under the Ministry of Mines and Energy. The Ministry of Mines and Energy, through the Solar Revolving Fund, has recently indicated that they will provide funding for 400 off-grid households in an effort to promote rural electrification, a step in the right direction. However, with low electrification rate, there is a need for considerable improvements to close the gap. Although we have limited water resources, we are not utilizing them efficiently. We should utilize the water resources from both perennial rivers in the north and south of the country, along with the Kaluego Shikadi Canal, to boost agricultural production in nearby regions. In order to improve water conservation in semi arid and arid central areas, innovative solutions are needed to reduce pipeline leakages whilst considering alternatives, including construction, constructing a desalination plant. Another important aspect of the rural economy is decent housing. Rural housing must be addressed. The rural areas in Namibia are filled with corrugated zinc or silver houses, as you might know. This is considered an upgrade from the mud houses. However, when we consider the water conditions that the country is experiencing, corrugated zinc houses cannot be considered decent housing at all. One of the recommendations made by the high-level panel on the Namibian economy was that land needs to be handed over to people living in the silver houses to enable them to build proper brick houses. Give them that land free of charge and tell them you have for five to ten years to build yourself a brick house and you'll see what's possible. This goes back to the issue of land access, to the issue of land servicing and use, land use in the country. Unlocking the potential of rural Namibia will require a new legislative framework. The land tenure system is a prohibitive factor contributing adversely to citizens and businesses alike, especially not exploiting the full potential of communal areas where the majority of Namibians live. Access to financing through converting title deeds into some form of tradable leasehold, which may unlock funding is required. This, in turn, can boost agricultural productivity and tourism activities in communal areas. Furthermore, a recent study conducted by the Bank of Namibia has revealed that acquiring property in Namibia is a complex, is a challenging process. There are various obstacles related to cost, to regulations and procedures that make the overall process extremely inefficient. The process is also fragmented, it's expensive and time consuming, which can be a burden for potential buyers, investors and other market participants. The bank in its advisory role will soon be calling a stakeholder workshop with all players with the aim of ensuring this process of acquiring property is streamlined and recommendations are actioned in the shortest possible time. We urge all stakeholders to fully support this crucial work, which could unlock the potential of property ownership, including in our rural areas. 
Then support to the informal sector. Lastly, I would like to talk about the informal sector, as this is key to rural development. The informal economy plays a critical role as the largest employer in the country, especially in rural areas. The latest available data from the National Labour Survey of 2018 shows that the proportion of informal to total employment in the country stood at 55.8%. In addition, in 2020, about 3.5% of businesses were estimated to have closed as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, which led to job losses for many, especially for those dependent on the informal economy for their livelihood. This estimate seems modest compared to the figures released by the Namibian Employers Federation in 2022, which indicate that in 2019, 158 companies, and in 2020, some 52 companies filed for liquidation in the High Court. This rapidly escalated to 815 registered companies and closed corporations who voluntarily deregistered between January 2020 and February 2021. As such, if the total number of businesses closing down is anything to go by in the aftermath of the pandemic, the proportion of informal to total employment has further increased. Despite the challenging working conditions for those operating in the informal economy, they contribute significantly to Namibia's gross domestic product. According to the 2016 report by the Namibia Statistics Agency, the informal sector accounts for around 16.2% of the country's gross domestic product. It is imperative, therefore, to reduce decent work deficits in the informal economy and facilitate pathways to formality. Doing so will ensure that the informal economy contributes to and benefits from inclusive economic development in order to reduce poverty and address social inequalities. For this reason, the Bank of Namibia, in collaboration with the United Nations system in Namibia and other key stakeholders, formed a national working group focusing on studying the informal sector. The main objectives of the diagnostic of the informal economy in Namibia are to gain better understanding of the informal economy and identify pathways to addressing the associated challenges while also highlighting opportunities for intervention. This collaboration is built upon the recognition that the high levels of informal employment in Namibia have significant implications for the country's economic and social development. Accordingly, a comprehensive diagnostic of informality is required to develop an evidence-based policy framework to address the challenge. These efforts will be complemented by the bank's initiatives towards the promotion of innovative financial services solutions and financial literacy for the rural areas, including MSMEs, youth and women. Ladies and gentlemen, my remarks are not aimed at preempting the discussions and ideas that will follow from the discussions during the course of the symposium. They are not to create an impression that the bank knows and has all the solutions. The symposium offers us the opportunity to collectively reflect, scrutinize and deliberate on this important topic, particularly around identifying few things that must be prioritized to transform the rural economy and make a meaningful contribution to the Namibian economy. We must seize the opportunities underlying the challenges in our rural economy. In this regard, I would like to suggest these few questions for consideration of the experts on this subject. Those of us who are policy makers or practitioners in the sector and all participants in the symposium. And these questions are, how can Namibia promote the ac and accelerate sustainable economic development in her rural areas? 
which of the existing rural development strategies need to be enhanced and which ones need to be done away with? What can we do as a country to ensure there is much needed infrastructure development in rural areas, especially with the limited available resources? How do we ensure that rural communities have access to land not only for productive agricultural use, but for tradability as well? What policies are most effective in increasing income generating activities, as well as improving economic well being in rural areas? How do we ensure that rural communities have access to markets without the need to travel to urban areas? How can stakeholders, such as the financial sector, respond to the evolving needs of rural communities? Director of Ceremonies, ladies and gentlemen, rural economic transformation is essential for a balanced and inclusive society. Achieving rural economic transformation will unlock the latent potential that lies within our rural communities. It will enable them to break free from traditional livelihoods and embrace new avenues for economic development. Let us work together to prioritize and invest in rural development and lay a foundation for sustainable and equitable economic development and create a prosperous future for the nation as a whole. Our symposium this morning is a renewed dialogue aimed at pinpointing the challenges that stakeholders face and finding solutions that work in our context so that we can reimagine our rural economies, create much needed jobs, reduce inequalities and poverty, and give them a new lease of life. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your attention.